<laughs> well, hello, I am Renee Bostic, and I am the Technical VP of Innovation and New Technologies at IBM. It's such a great pleasure to be here with you today and quite an honor. The work I am representing is from IBM Research, and the details are found in the IBM Journal of Research and Development, in case you want to know more after my talk. So with that, why don't we get started? Always with from IBM, you have a disclaimer. <laughs> as, as always already been stated, uh, we don't know if this technology will come to light, but we are glad to present it to you today. What is the problem statement? If you think about all of the major majority world countries today, I would say about 6.2 million from the, the World of Health and um, the World Health, Health Organization that actually state that children die for causes that really aren't necessary. And that's because medicine cannot reach that particular country. And how do you really profoundly think about this and why it cannot be addressed? And the reason why it can be addressed is because there are touch points, 32 different organizations touch a package when it leaves a minority world country like Europe and the United States to go help someone in a majority world country. And so with that, we're talking about provenance, all the way from cradle to grave of a particular asset. And you can see some of the statistics here. In the United States and the Europe alone, there are about 7,700 deaths from foodborne illness as well. Very important for you to know that we can prevent this. Uh, when I go to present at different blockchain conferences, one of the first questions I ask when I talk about the food farm to fork analogy, they say to me, Renee, how do you know that hamburger came from that cow at that farm? And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. Always starting with an architecture, a baseline for all of us to understand the technology and the concept. So what is a cryptographic anchor? A cryptographic anchor is a way that we can connect a unique identifier to the actual physical object. And there's a property of that object that you, as a manufacturer, as you, um, as, as an example, um, as a producer of a particular good, feel that it's hard to replicate, clone, or counterfeit. And so with that, at the bottom layer is the physical layer, the actual physical object itself. And what we're talking about is not tagging something externally, like we do with barcodes, et cetera. We're talking about tagging the object internally, right? And then from intermediaries, that particular layer, we talk about, again, RFID, NFC tags, um, et cetera. We, what we're talking about is new technology. There are four I want to talk to you about, about today. One is um, microfluidics. The, um, specifically a, ve a verifier, and then SRAM as a micro, a crypto uh, key, and then the third area is a small computer. That, those are the four that we'll talk about today. And then blockchain is, sits at the top layer. Many of you know that blockchain is distributed ledger technology. Today, when we work with multiple entities, every entity has its own ledger. But now we're talking about what a particular business network, what do we need to share together? Back to that analogy about 6.2 6 million children can't get the medicine they need. 32 ch um, touch points between when it leaves a pharmacy company all the way to when it uh, arrives. Uh, that's a lot of different touch points. And sometimes you can't even get the medicine there because the bill of lading is sitting on someone's desk. So this is what we're talking about, is reducing this amount of time and being able to bring this to market with blockchain. So through consensus, being able to agree on what should be written to the ledger, blocks are then recorded and cannot be changed. That's immutable. And this is why many people love blockchain. It's because of the capability around immutability, finality, accountability, and traceability, what we're gonna be talking about today. So how can we get a little bit more into, I, I mentioned the definition of, block, um, of, of crypto, right? Uh, um, centered on unique ID and digital foot, um, fingerprint. So let's start from uh, example A. You have a manufacturer. This is what we do today, right? We tag it with a barcode. And with that barcode, it is then has, you know, 
product information, product properties that's stored on the blockchain itself or in a database. Very, very simple. Um, this new technology that we're talking about, about being embedded, would be things like an embedded security feature, microprinting, hologram you know, generation, a security ink. Uh, many of you here in London know of Everledger with the provenance of diamonds. They actually do a laser uh, in inscription within their particular diamonds. So this is what we're talking about in that particular scenario. The second one in B, Let's think a little bit more about my analogy with the beef, the hamburger. How do you know it came back all the way to that farm from that cow? Um, the physical uh, fingerprint, which is another way, a source of authentication, is being able to say, how can you change or how can you look at the variability of the different uh, types of food? IBM is working with Mars Incorporated and cataloging all the DNA and RNA from food products. Because if you look at an apple versus a peach versus a pear, externally they have different variations. And so from a physical fingerprint, not only will we have the barcode, which provides us the product information, we will also have inside some type of crypto anchor of that particular food and, um, as an example, or, or that can relate in order to say these pairs mean that this is a signature of that particular um, farm or provider. And I have some really exciting news to you because I'm like, you're saying, how are you going to put a chip in a pair? <laughs> uh, the third area, I want to just um, you know, think of our sponsor, um, Blanc Pond. Today, with a you know, gorgeous watch, right, luxury goods, how can you then say that this is authentic? And I learned a lot last night at a reception about um, Blanc Pont. And how I, I found out is um, they can indeed use what we call configured secrets. This is um, the scenario C for the source of authentication. And what could be some of the secrets? It's things that the manufacturer know. Again, that's hard to duplicate a, a clone. And in, so in this scenario, what we're talking about is 42 millimeters, there's a type of rose gold they use. And yesterday I found out on the dial is a, a special type of enamel paint that the, I learned it's the craftsman, I said he was an artist, I think I <laughs> stated it wrong, but the craftsman actually paints um, with enamel there. So those would be configured secrets that only the manufacturer would know unless it would be published. And then that, there would be a response to that. So think about the enamel paint. On enamel paint, um, when you put it up against um, light wavelengths, the microscopic data of that paint, then you would be able to trace it. And so that's a, the third area is called a challenge response. The manufacturer has a challenge, there's a response, and when we read that particular watch, the characteristics of the dial, then we can then um, indeed say this is authentic. Now let's go into the four types. I talked really about the first layer, the physical layer, the assets, how would you then go about tagging embedded information? Now let's talk about here the four, four different types of cryptographic anchors. The first one is uh, microfluidics. It would be, as an example, a pacemaker. Uh, as an example, the surgeon wants to make sure that when they go to, goes to surgery, the pacemaker is authentic and is not a counterfeit. Uh, from this particular uh, scenario, we have an optical security code uh, on um, silicon micro um, pillars. And, and how do we do this? How do you actually provide that uh, imprint on there? You, first of all, in A, have an alignment marker. And the alignment marker really says to the, the manufacturer, this is where the code is going to be placed. And then you'll have different characteristics, like a uniform pattern, which might be your logo. It could be an alphanumeric pattern. Um, um, you know, name, uh, the type of device, the serial number, or encoded pattern, something that you don't want anyone else to be aware of except the surgeon and the manufacturer. Um, so with that then, um, it, it, it could be at any device uh, that you have of that silicon micro pillow um, capability, then it's print imprinted with a special die. 
And then how do you read it? Because now you have a pattern, right, of different shapes and sizes. How do you then go about reading that? There are two ways. You could use a film that you could put over that pattern that displays the code. But we are talking about microfluidics. And so here you could then um, put water on the device. And from there, that's where we go on to the D um, um, part of this is when the water hits it, it erases away the code that is not necessary for the reader and then reveals the permanent code. Uh, and so then you'd be able to read to see if this is authentic. Another reason why this is very important is because we now know that this, when, once you read it, it cannot be repeated. Very important for cryptographic anchors not to have somebody repeat something and make it become fraudulent. And so we talked about two, three, two, two or three other um, types of devices. The other one here is uh, actually a call a verifier. And, and you will understand, if you can, that when you go to a restaurant, as an example, and now you want to have a meal, how do you know where does, does that object, is it authentic, based on the characteristics of it? And so now with this verifier, it has a device attached. From my mobile phone, I will be able to read that particular object from my table, if you will, and to say whether it's the characteristics of true lettuce or not. Uh, another example, if you can see the grains up at the top um, in China in some areas, we're finding that they're substituting plastic for rice. I don't know if you're aware of this, but in this scenario, then I would be able to read to see if it has the characteristics of plastic or is it truly a grain of rice. And so this is uh, what we call a verifier that is in research at the moment. It also can read other types of fluids such as oil, et cetera. And in the future, can you imagine not having to use that in laser inscription with inside a diamond, but then being able to leverage this verifier to verify it? So we're talking about the evolution of technology as well. The third area we talked about was around SD RAM, um, you know, or SRAM uh, crypto keys. And this is for more for semiconductors, right? And from a semiconductor perspective, how many times do you think a manufacturer like Apple gets a call and says, I have an, an Apple machine, I need maintenance, and then it becomes a cloned device? And so manufacturers, want, want, they actually want to use SRAM um, crypto keys in order to be able to say this is authentic, this is a genuine um, piece of hardware from my manufacturing company. So that's, that's SRAM crypto key. The third one goes back to last year, IBM announced the smallest computer in the world. It's the size of a crystal of salt. And when you think about that, um, this is where you would be able to, back to the point, um, determine if a particular food item is authentic or not, or a type of medicine from a pharmaceutical company. Uh, it, and this particular device can be then embedded. ENCODE Technologies is from London. They have not published a white paper or a research paper at this time, but they are, claim, they are making claims leveraging this technology to have now an edible crypto anchor. And so from this perspective, um, think about this. I, 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 this is another presentation I gave, and someone said, Renee, how do you know the yogurt? The yo if you look at yogurt, it comes from different, ma different farms, right? You have different types of uh, fruit in it. You have uh, milk products. How do you know? But if you can imagine that crypto anchor being perhaps on the inside cover, when you peel it off, you'll be able to run water over that anchor, and then it will reveal you know, whether it's authentic or not, you know, the capabilities around um, the characteristics of the fruit that's in that, <clears throat> that particular yogurt. And so from, from this perspective, again, okay, crypto technology, right, crypto anchors, again, tie the unique ID to the physical object, leveraging hard data, hard properties that you cannot clone, or are very hard to clone. And so what is our prediction? Our prediction is that the supply chain partners who leverage crypto anchors, not only are they excited about it, but they are joining in <clears throat> in order to test the technology to ensure that we provide safe, secure, and reliable crypto anchors to leverage with technology such as blockchain. 
And again, what did I mention about blockchain? The capability of being able to write information. So from all these crypto anchors, thinking about writing that reference data from all of these crypto anchors in order to capture it to show that it is indeed genuine. So with that, I want to say thank you so much for this talk, and I hope that you learned a little bit more about crypto anchors and the capabilities that it will provide, and to know it will come in varying um, types of shapes and sizes. So thank you very much. <laughs>